My name is Dena Jane Madrid, the group 8 leader. So our title is Geometric Art with a concept art class objective, applied geometric concept especially in isometries, describing and creating design. The connect topic in the concept, geometry offers the obvious connection between the two disciplines. Both art and math Im involves drawing and the use of shapes and forms, as well as an understanding of spatial concept, two and three dimensions, measurements, estimation, and patterns. Good morning everyone, I am Shalom Marikuya and I will be your teacher for your art class. So our topic for today is all about geometry. So who among you here knows what is geometry? We can find geometry in our everyday life and we can also relate it to art. Like for some famous artists like Pablo Picasso, Robert Morris, Mary Kors, William Roberts and many other artists that uses line, shape, form, pattern, symmetry, scale and proportion in order to illustrate or emote the illusion of realism. So for today's activity, each of you will be assigned to paint using the concept of geometry and each of you will present the output in front of the class. And you will be graded according to the criteria that relates to Van Hale theory of geometric thoughts. So first in our criteria is the visual, which is equivalent to 20%. You should be able to describe the shapes of your art on the basis of their appearance. And the second one is analysis which is also equivalent to 20%. You should be able to describe the shapes of your output on the basis of their properties. And the third one is abstraction, which is also 20%. You should be able to recognize the importance of the properties and the relationship of your art, and you should logically order the properties of the shapes. And the fourth one is deduction, which is also 20%. You should be able to attain logical reasoning ability and prove theorems deductively. And the last one is rigor, which is also equivalent to 20%. You should be able to establish and analyze theorems in different postulation systems. So all in all, your final grade for your presentation should be over 100%. So now you may start doing your activity. Janio, is there any problem? It's just I don't know how to start it now. Just be creative and do your best. Okay, thank you, Mom. Now may I call on Janil Kaduldulan to present her output in front of the class? Good morning to all of you. I am Janil Kaduldulan and I am your reporter for today's discussion. So my topic is all about the psychology of shapes. It is possible to perceive and analyze every visual element in terms of shape. Like if you wish to design a house icon, the instant thought is a rectangle with a triangle on a top. That's the most basic way of how it is perceived. Figures and shapes have a significant impact on our awareness and conduct. Psychology of shapes is a science studying the influence of shapes on the people. It suggests that every shape has a meaning attached to it, which influences our mind and reactions differently. According to Kyle Torrey in 2018 from Sed and Pelai, the most common shapes are squares, rectangles, circles, triangles, rhombuses, and hexagons. So these are the common shapes. So first is the square and rectangle. So these two shapes are the most widely used shapes. So we see them numerous times a day. So the straight lines and 90 degrees angles of the two shapes offer a sense of reliability, security, balance, and tradition. So next is triangle. So triangle represents stability, manifestation, enlightenment, revelation, and a higher perspective. So circle. Circle represents the notions of totality, wholeness, original perfections, the self, the infinite, eternity, the timelessness, and all cyclic movement. So next is the hexagon. So hexagon representation is the harmony and balance and also the male and female energy. And last is the rhombus. So rhombus represents harmony, stability, vibrant, contemporary, and oneness with all things. And that's all for today. I hope you learned something about the psychology of shapes. That's all. Thank you and God bless. Hey, Ira. Did you know that geometric patterns are the collection of shapes repeating or altered to create a cohesive design? Of course. Ayla, darling, enumerated the 40 brilliant ways on how to use geometric pattern in the design. So, Diana, what are you painting? 
um, I don't know, how about help me to choose one? Number one is use pattern to create an image. Simple shape can your own can be applied using a variety of shapes to create a whole image. Number two is play with symmetry. But not all geometric patterns have to be a symmetry cut. Sometimes creating something for shape and lines deeper across the board can create streaky effects. Number three is combine patterns with photo. Geometric patterns can be great, creating way to space up ordinary photos. Number four is use lightning and shadows creatively. Shadows and highlights can be used to enhance shapes and some, sometimes create them. Number five is connect shapes in unique ways. Shapes can create image, exploring how those shapes connect and create new interesting effects. Number six is make a collage. Collage is a piece of art by streaking various different materials such as photographs and a pieces of paper or fabric into a parking. Number seven is use diagonals. Diagonal create a clear path for the eye to follow, offering the bonus of cohesive design. Using diagonal patterns, project a beautiful juxtaposition of an image and colors. Number eight is create isometric patterns. Isometric patterns are patterns that appear to be the three-dimensional can really make an image pop if used correctly. Use hand hard colors to create the illusions that the shape pop of the page. Use strongly and creatively. This can draw attention to specific items or words. Number nine is create patterns with fun. If you want to really stretch your creativity, try using the type space itself to create your patterns. Using a variety of triangle and hard lines to produce a jagged and edgy effects. Number 10 is play with symmetry. While symmetry creates a more free-flowing, fun look, symmetry can be used in geometric patterns to create something more elegant. Number 11 is use pattern within a pattern. If you want something more complex including geometric patterns, within already existing shape can be the way to go. Number 12 is keep it simple. Conversely, not everything has to be complex. Simple shape can be just a painting. There's a beauty in simplicity. Number 13 is think about different ways to use lines. Lines are the most basic elements of any shape. Using them creatively can help create a new effect and can create a nice flow between image and information. Number 14 is create a theme. Patterns on their own are great. Patterns used to connect image are even better, especially when those patterns all relate to one another. 15 is use gradients. Geometric gradients can enhance that making a gradients with background or image pop using simple gradients between shapes and some cases makes the shapes almost blend together and, and, and others making them stand out even more. Number 16 is create character. Geometric pattern can create not only image but character. 17 is combine several different images. Shape can be also combine ser several different images together in ways that may both be expected and unexpected. Experiment with that images might work well together and how they might change the image as the whole and use different shapes to make it all come together. Number 18 is emulate an effect with shapes. Shapes can be incredibly effective if used to resemble certain action or consequence. Using shape like this can add meaning and vibrancy to images and a very less it creates a startling pictures. Number 19 is create a background. If you want to something or a little stubbler, try streaking to a simple geometric background. This can add a little experiment, excitement to a website or presentation without being too obvious or distracting. Number 20 is create overlapping shapes. Sometimes all it takes is a simple trick to create complicity, experiment with how different shapes overlap, and see what might work for you. So what do you think? The number 4, use lightning and shadows creatively. Oh, I think that's a good one. Thank you, Ira. Ayana, help me to choose two. Release, release patterns to the subject. Give the pattern a purpose by relating it directly to the subject. Using a leaf pattern to surround the lemon reflects the subject matter. Use patterns in the letters. You can create patterns within the letters. Use a pattern to alter image. You can use patterns to alter parts of an already existing image, geometric photography. For example, uses shapes to shift around where certain pieces of the image are. Shifting different parts of an image can create a different effect and can create something quite original. 
choose colors that work together. Whenever using colors with geometric patterns, you'll want to make sure you have those that work well together, especially if they happen to be on shapes that border each other. Use shapes that enhance the experience. Find shapes that fit and flow well together and that create a more symbols whole rather than something that seems thrown together. Create unique effects. You can use a lot of different styles and shapes to create something completely your own. For example, you can use shapes that create the illusion of a reflection such as, such as in this case. Combining different shapes, lightning and colors can produce different effects and illusions and gives you a lot of material to work with. Create a border. A border is a good way to enhance an image with shapes without being too destructive. Add simple animation. With technology, we have the benefit of enhancing various Given pattern for the internet like, for example, adding simple alternating animation between two geometric patterns. Make it subtle. Not everything has to be obvious. Subtle shapes can be just as effective. Use patterns to segment information. Patterns are a great way to separate and categorize information, making it easier for viewers to find. Create hand-drawn patterns. Traditional art appeals to nostalgia and allows you to create something bit more personal. Use patterns to highlight er certain elements. Patterns and lines are quite effective at drawing the eye to certain elements. Combine several patterns. You don't have to stick to one pattern using multiple makes the elements more engaging. Choose and commonly use shapes. No one says you have to stick to the standard circles, squares, and triangles. In fact, a design might work better using less traditional shapes. Create a web between shapes. Lines are great at drawing the eye to elements. Why not use this in a web between different subjects? Use it in make connection between several subjects. Make a more appealing design or something else entirely. Limit complex patterns. Complex patterns are great, but too many can be overwhelming. Theory provides an interesting. Know how and where to use your pattern, and you'll be more likely to keep your viewers' attention. Make it good and black and white. Not every pattern needs color. Keeping it black and white can be just as appealing and can make a pattern more widely applicable. Incorporate real-life elements. If you want something that screams personal, try including geometric patterns that you see in your everyday workplace. Accent other material. You don't have to leave the pattern on certain subjects. You can branch across various products. Use patterns sparingly. Probably the simplest tip. But one of the easiest to forget, this is more geometric patterns don't need to be plastered all over your page. So, what do you think? Choose the number 31, create hand-draw patterns, just easy compared to others. Thank you, Diana. Okay class, I appreciate all your efforts and the bell just rang so we need to end this class for today. We will continue our presentation next meeting. That's all, class dismissed. Goodbye!